It's Sonia, live in L.A. with Dr. Sonia Friedman. Welcome back. In just a moment, America's favorite child star, Shirley Temple Black. She's enjoying grandmotherhood these days. But first, look at that face. How could you not love that face? Shirley Temple, at the ripe old age of six, she found instant stardom and became America's favorite little darling. Little maybe, but her co-stars were definitely not small fries. Cary Grant, Gary Cooper, Carol Lombard, Ginger Rogers, and of course, Bill Bojangles Robinson. The lollipop princess grew up to become Shirley Temple Black, a distinguished stateswoman. She served as the U.S. ambassador to the Republic of Ghana and a U.S. representative in the U.N. This may all sound rosy, but the child star turned diplomat says her life hasn't always been so sweet. And she talks about it in her wonderful autobiography, Child Star. Ambassador Black, welcome. Thank you, Sonia. Good to Doctor. have you. Thank you with us today. <laughs> We've got our titles. Yes, out of the we, way now. we have that out of the way. We don't yes. have to do that anymore. No. What did it mean to be a child star? I mean, to be the darling of America to you at six and seven years of age. Well, I didn't know that, but uh, I think that the I don't think I could have had a better life as a child than the one I had. I started in dancing school at the age of two and a half because my mother said. She has a lot of energy, and I think what I better do is try to expend some of that energy. So she was afraid I was going to pull the house down. So I started two and a half, and then at three and a half, I became a starlet in little uh, one-reel comedy-type shows. Did you love it? Yeah, I loved it. I loved every bit of my life, the bad parts, because we all have to have them, and the good parts, and... Um, I wouldn't change the bumps and bruises and warts and all that for anything. I want to know how a little girl of six dealt with actors like a Frank Morgan. You talk about this mm. new book, who hammed and mugged and made sure... He that taught me to be... Uh, he was a scene stealer, and so I learned a lot from Frank Morgan. You know, he was the wizard in The Wizard of Oz. Yes. But when he worked with me in uh, Dimples, he wore white gloves, white cotton gloves. And since I was so short, he would take the gloves off like that and sort of wave them, you know, in front of the face so you'd watch the gloves instead of Shirley. So I learned, and I started upstaging him, and pretty soon we were almost backed into a corner. <laughs> That's a wonderful story. Yeah. Bill Bojangles Robinson, Uncle Bill, I understand, the first interracial dance team. We were the first interracial dance couple, and um, Bill Robinson has turned out to be the star, my favorite star of all time, my favorite dance teacher, and I had a lot of good ones, and my best personal friend on, uh, on the set and in, um, at home. Wonderful. We all hear about stage mothers, mm -hmm. and what about yours? Was she really a stage mother? Did the public misinterpret? Did she use you? No. Mother was uh, tall. She was 5'8". She was very dignified. She could fix wiring, plumbing, stucco a house, cook, sew, knit, everything, and took care of her three children. So when we suddenly got into this uh, crazy business, she developed kind of an austere quality about her. She was very shy in real life, and I'm, you can tell I'm shy, Sonia, too. Right. I was very outgoing. And so between the two of us, we kind of uh, pioneered together she bathed me in love and that was the trick the stage mother can be a fearsome person uh, a typical stage mother uh, in fact I've seen some of them where they would pinch the children to make them cry or tell them terrible stories about their dog having just died or whatever and very aggressive very pushy mother and I took advantage of opportunities and we did go on casting calls and all that but um, she was the best best mother that anybody could have a and I dedicated my book yes. Child Star to her yes a wonderful story that you tell which is so remarkable because she was so young yeah you had a call in one studio and apparently she was going to see mayor I think it was in another the two of you 
Was it Mayor? Did I yeah, get it wrong? It depends but, which story. Okay, well, this is the two of you had an incident that occurred. Oh, at MGM. Yes, okay. Yes. <laughs> right. Would you tell us that? Because it's amazing that a mother and daughter would have that and want to come home and well, tell each other that. We story. had left the protection of Fox Studio where they took such care, and anyone who said a swear word was sent home. You know, I'd have to be sent home, not the person who swore. And um, we were ushered into different offices at MGM. Mother went to L.B. Mayer's office, and I was sent to Arthur Freed's office. Yes. And Arthur Freed was sitting behind his desk, and I was about 12 years old. And there was a flourish of his clothing, and he stood up. And he was an exhibitionist, is what he was. He exhibited, you know, whatever. And I had never seen anyone naked except myself. And I thought he looked so funny, sorry gentlemen, <laughs> I thought he looked so funny that I burst out laughing and laughed so hard I had tears coming down my cheeks. And he got infuriated and said, out, out, out. So I went down to the lobby to wait for my mama and um, she came down from L.B. Mayer's office, she was very quiet. And we got in the car and I said, uh, mom, I've got to tell you, you know, you've got to tell me the facts of life or something. Um, and I told her what happened, and she got kind of quiet, and she said, well, wait till you hear what happened to me. Well, L.B. Mayer uh, came and sat on the couch next to my mother and put his hand on her knee. And the, the hand didn't stay there. It wasn't mano morte. The hand started moving, and she got up quickly and put her big purse in front of her and backed out of his office. So the two of us said, MGM is different, isn't it? Yes, yes. What a, yeah. what a wonderful moment for the two of you yeah. that you recall so yeah. well. And now, looking back at, at all of those times, you have maintained such a wonderful sense of stability. You really pro off of that as one comes into your presence and knows you. How are you able to do that? Many child stars weren't. Well, I'm, um, I'm very active. I had 19 years, Sonia, in the entertainment business, 19 years of rearing our family, and then 19 years now of U.S. government service. And so all my careers are the same length of time. And if the viewer out there says, well, she's 60 years old, she can't add. Those first three years were learning my craft. Let me ask you. Yeah. The last film you were in, mm -hmm. did you have a sense it was going to be the last? No, but I kind of hoped it was. It was not very good. Someone singing in the yes, background. Yes, yes, they're probably so getting ready to sing a, for you. Have for a you happy on the, studio on, yes. on the Good Ship Lollipop. Yes. yes. <laughs> one of the most. I want to tell one story that I haven't been able to tell. I was butted by a goat in Heidi, and the goat's name was Old Turk, and Old Turk would just. It was his whole life to butt people, and this was when I was pretty little, and he butted me once. And they said, well, we have to try that again. This was a rehearsal. So he butted me the second time, and my mother said, you'll have to get a double. She can't get, she might get hurt. And I was so upset, because a little boy had to have the wig put on and the costume, and he got to be butted by Old Turk. I loved it. I loved getting butted by a goat. Well, well, uh... Strange child. We'll, <laughs> we'll think about that for a minute. But Shirley Temple Blast is going to stay with us, and we'll be back with more. <laughs> Some stories making headlines this hour. However, first when we return. And we'll take our first from Annette in California. Hello, Annette. Hello, Annette. I mean Annette. <laughs> Hi, Sonia. Hi. My husband watches you all the time. Well, thank you. He just loves you. Thank you. Comment for Shirley Temple Black or question? Oh, uh, I saw Shirley yesterday in Pasadena. She had a red dress on. Yes, yeah, red Remember suit. Remember Shirley? Yeah, I sure, well, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I said to you, you're beautiful, Shirley. Aren't I you nice? I was two hours. You, now, you signed how many that? books yesterday? About three to a quarter to five. Uh -huh. I signed about 1,200 books yesterday because there were two autographings. Isn't that amazing? Today I'll be at uh, Walden Books, I think, on Beverly. We'll see how I do today. Okay, Beverly. okay, Beverly. okay great. Doreen from California with us now. Hi, Doreen. Hello. Yes. Yes, I wanted to say to Shirley that when I was very, very small and lived in Minneapolis, Captain January came for the first time to the theater there. And they had a, a, a contest for a Shirley Temple doll. And I remember writing a letter for that, but I didn't win the doll. I won two tickets to her movie, Captain January. So actually, her movie, Captain January, was my very first movie. 
Isn't that interesting? And we have loved her ever since. I mean, she's been my... Thank you. Her yeah. films are my treasures. Isn't that a wonderful thing to say? Yeah. You have been very careful about what you lend your name to when we talk very about careful. issues of doll. How do you make those decisions? Uh, I always have, really, on that sort of thing. Um, I want people to have things... If my name's on it, I want it to be a quality item. I check, for instance, the Shirley Temple dolls that are produced by Danbury Mint now and I have them checked quarterly at random from the factory so I can make sure that the hair is okay, that no one's going to chew on the doll and get sick, you know, or... Good for you. Yeah, Good and so you. I'm very careful. I think I've licensed my name in my entire career 163 times. Well, it's nice to know that you follow through as far as the quality of that. Yeah. Let's go to Larry in New York who's with us now. Hello, Larry. Yeah, hi, Shirley. Yes, Larry. Yeah, I was wondering how you felt about the colorization of some of your movies. You know whose network this is. <laughs> well, we do. I, I can tell you that I have not seen any of my films colorized. But uh, I made such a big pitch yesterday that maybe they will send me the ten that are out now. I get nothing from those cassettes. You know, no actor or actress gets any money from uh, their old films. But I'll, um, I'll look at them and see what I think. All right. Well, if uh, Ted's watching. I'm basically against colorization for movies that are dramatic, the Hitchcock, the, uh, the beautiful uh, films. We would spend an hour and a half getting the lighting just right, the cinematographers, the lighting, getting everything just perfect. And I'm not sure that uh, colorization doesn't wash all of that away. However, I'm a modern person. I don't live in the past, except when I wrote my autobiography. Right. Let's I'm, go to for, I'm for now and the, and the future. Let's go to Joe in L.A. Hi, Joe. Hi. Uh, hi, Sonia. Hi, Shirley. I first of all grew up watching all your movies, Shirley, and I will be buying the book. But my question is, with so many books on the market today, when writing the book, did you experience any uh, insecurities about, like, who will buy this book, will it sell type thing? Absolutely. You know, I thought it was a very interesting life, and when I, when I started to write it, I wrote it for my children, and um, I wanted to set the record straight. And as I got into it, I thought, maybe something in here will, will help other people. And so I decided to share it. But you're right, it's panic time. Does anyone care, you know, what one's life is about? But I tried to make it a history of the time I lived in, or how I fit into the depression years and the history not only in the United States but in um, in the world with World War II and all these things that happened so it's kind of my little piece of of the history yes and it's a large piece for many Thank of you. us let's go to Sarah in California hello Sarah hi yes uh, hello Can you yes hear me? Sarah you're right on the air Sarah go ahead I tuned in a few minutes late, so I don't know how much Shirley spoke of her children. Uh, oh, thank you. I, I, I haven't. Good. Tell us a little bit about I that. have uh, three children. Susan is 40. Susan is the mother of our one granddaughter, Teresa, who incidentally will be riding with me uh, in the Tournament of Roses parade in Pasadena. Nice. I'm Grand Marshal again. Nice. First for the 50th anniversary, now the 100th. I'm looking forward to the hunting. <laughs> Susan is a writer and uh, very artistic and a wonderful, wonderful daughter. Uh, our son Charlie works at the Department of Commerce in the International Trade Administration in Washington, D.C. and has a black mustache and is very handsome. And our youngest daughter, Lori, is a photographer and plays bass in a heavy metal band. Wonderful distribution. Oh, Thank you. You know who we forgot? Oh the best man in the whole world, my husband. Oh, yes, we haven't mentioned him. On December 16th, we will start our 39th year of, of marriage together. And if you're watching, Charlie, you're super, hun. We can still see your movies. We can see them on video cassette, and certainly And I think the night. Disney Channel is running them, I hear. And I just want to know very quickly before we say goodbye, when you sit with your little grandchild and watch the, the movies, mm -hmm. what is her response to seeing Shirley Temple? She knows it's her nana, she knows it's her grandmother, and we hold hands a lot. She likes it best. It was a live television show I did um, in 61, 1961, where I played a witch. It oh, was, it I was can Babes imagine. in Toyland. Right. And she thinks that's the best acting job 
that I ever did for being with us today. <laughs> Thank it you, Sonia. It was just wonderful.